Watch you guys, got another troubleshooting video here for you. PC won't boot or post, but the fans are spinning. That's what we're going to be troubleshooting today. I've just built this PC and we've got a issue with the PC. Now, this is quite a common problem. People build computers all the time and occasionally you get an issue with some of these. And these could be DOA or some sort of hardware issue, which is what we've got here. As you can see, when I power it on, uh, the fans will spin, but we're getting no post. We do get just a black screen. That could either be a video issue, which is your GPU, or it could be CPU, motherboard, or RAM, or any other piece of hardware inside the computer. Now, the way you can avoid this is by doing a power on self test. Everyone should be doing this before they build a computer. You put the motherboard onto the bench and basically give it some power and put your GPU in and see if you get post. If you do, you're good to uh, build your PC and you know you've got all good working parts here. This is what I advise everyone to do uh, when they build PCs because it avoids you having to dismantle a PC just like we're going to have to do with this one to either RMA it or, you know, diagnose it. Now, if you don't do a power on self test, which is basically testing the hardware to see if you get post, before you build the PC, this can save you a lot of time because if you've spent all this time building the PC, we now need to dismantle it and find out what's wrong. So I can see here that we have got power. The pump is actually working. I can feel uh, vibration and water moving through here and the pipes have got liquid through, going through them. The fans are spinning and we need to find out whether it's a GPU related issue, a RAM issue, motherboard or CPU. And we'll go through this. It could be... Uh, a power supply issue where you're not getting enough power to feed this hungry graphics card. And I know that's not the case because we have a 750 watt GT um, supernova power supply in here. We've got plenty of power for this using this power supply, but it doesn't necessarily mean the power supply is not bad and it's not giving the graphics card enough power. So we need to obviously work this all out when we're troubleshooting. And we can do that by quickly swapping out the GPU to see whether we get display. So what I'm going to do here is pull the HDMI cable out while it's on to see whether we can uh, kick this into life. And we'll see what happens. So let me go ahead and pull this cable out here. And uh, you should see now we get no signal, which is what you'd expect if you haven't got the cable plugged in or you're having some sort of issue, but we've got no cable in here. So I'm going to plug it back into the GPU here and see what happens. And there we go. We get a black screen. So we've got no signal now. And also we do get a black screen. Now clearing the CMOS is always a good thing to try as well, which I've already tested. I've popped the battery and cleared it and basically uh, got a black screen still. So it's nothing to do with the CMOS. And what we want to do next is I want to remove the graphics card and put in another graphics card to test to see whether it's the GPU. I'm hoping that it's not a GPU related issue because it's quite an expensive card and I don't want to go through all the hassle of RMA in it and sending it all back, uh, which can be a bit uh, of a long winded process. So let's go ahead and get this out of the machine and try it with another card. So I've got it removed from the system as you can see here this is where it normally sits now just want to point out here on the back of the machine here is which i see a lot of people do and make a mistake on is they plug the cable up here and basically when you plug in here if you don't have onboard graphics uh, it's not going to give you a display so you need to make sure it's plugged into the gpu and not into this one here now if you've got no graphics card then it's okay to populate this area because that's how you're going to get your display but it can be a little bit confusing to some people and they plug them in there and also they don't get no display here especially if you're using a cpu like mine which doesn't have any uh, graphics on there a lot of the intel ones will have some sort of on board gpu uh, but these uh, amd ones that i'm using here don't have any graphics display so plug it in there would mean you would get a black screen as you'd expect, because there is no graphics card that you're plugging it into. So just make sure you don't do that. So let's go ahead and get the graphics card in here 
and, and unfortunately a lot of people haven't always got a second graphics card and this can lead to a lot of issues when troubleshooting now you don't need a high-end graphics card to troubleshoot this you can use a 710 or you know a 1030 and i'm just gonna put in this graphics card you can see the dust particles floating about this has been on the side and got a bit of dust in there but i'm going to slot this into the slot here this is a 1660 super and it's just going to need one of these power cables to give it a bit of power and uh, basically what i'll do is i'll give it a bit of power here plug in the hdmi cable and plug in the power cord and then we'll power it on to see whether we get any sort of display so i've got the hdmi in and the power cable in give it a bit of power we don't need to use this one here i'm just going to leave this to sit into the side we've got a black screen here does it give us any display no it doesn't and basically that means it's not the gpu which is a good sign because i didn't want to send that gpu back so now we're getting the same issue with two gpus which tells me it's more than likely not the gpu because i know this gpu is in good working order now, because this is a 1660 Super and it doesn't require a lot of power, this 750 watt power supply that I have in this system here means that uh, this power supply could be bad, uh, but I very much doubt it. But I'm going to move on to the next step, which is memory, because sometimes reseating the memory or uh, just using one memory stick, we could have bad memory. So I'm going to definitely move on to that step. I can always test another power supply a little bit later on. So let me go ahead and assume the power supply is okay for a second. And because we've already tried a lower grade graphics card here, uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not bad. So we will need to test that. So I've got one stick of memory now into the slot. I've removed one stick and we're going to power on to see whether we get any sort of display. So we've removed one stick. And again, we're getting that black screen of death. There's no um, display here. So we now know that this stick doesn't work in that slot and we need to swap and try this stick. But first, what I'm going to do is put it into another slot and try it in that slot as well, because we always need to try both of these sticks. But I'm going to try it in the other slot first and then we'll swap the sticks around and go from there. So let's go ahead and power this down and swap the stick over and put it into the other slot. And that's what we need to do here just to see whether we get any post. So I'm going to basically plug this into the next slot until you hear a click. And then we can power on the computer and see whether we get some sort of display. And uh, what we're going to do here is leave that for a little second or so. And oh, we've got a HDMI cable, as you can see here. And now we have some sort of display on the screen which is a good sign because now it means that we've finally worked out what it could be. It's either a bad RAM stick or it's a bad motherboard slot. And uh, we need to try and swap this out. So I'm going to put this into the other slot again. Now we know that this stick is working and that slot is working. We can now troubleshoot and find out whether it is uh, the RAM or whether it's the actual motherboard. You can see here we do have BIOS display, which is a good sign as well. So let's power this down and put the other stick of RAM into the same slot to see whether we get post with this one. And that way we can test to see whether the RAM is working properly. If we get post, it's going to now go down to being a motherboard issue. So let's go ahead and just pull this out here and swap these around and put them into the same slot again. It's not rocket science, it's pretty straightforward stuff. And uh, if you want to be a technician, this is the best and quickest and easiest way to diagnose and troubleshoot computer problems. People overcomplicate things, and I see loads of videos online where people overcomplicate things. Keep it simple, and you'll find faults very, very quickly. So now we're giving it another bit of power here to see whether we get post there we go we do we've get the same display it's now starting to boot up because i've already got windows 10 on that drive and you can see we now know that both of these sticks are working in one slot on that board which means it can't be a memory issue it's got to be related to the motherboard or the slot on the motherboard 
Now I've checked the motherboard slot to make sure there's no debris in there. And I've looked inside. I can't see any sort of debris inside the, the board because it's a brand new board. And what we need to do is going to put another sticker memory, which I've got from another computer into that slot that was not working before. And we'll just test to see whether we get any sort of post or display in that slot with another sticker memory. And what this is going to tell me is 100% that it's not a RAM issue, that it's going to be a motherboard related issue because we've tried two lots of different RAM. And this is the easiest way to test. So we're getting no display, as you can see here, with another sticker RAM, which is a known good working piece of RAM. And I'm going to put it in that slot there and it's not working. So that tells me we do have a bad motherboard. So that is the diagnosis over. We don't need to examine any further the parts on this PC. What I can do is just quickly put this sticker RAM into the working slot that worked to see whether we get a bootable PC if I put it in here, which I'm expecting we will. But I just want to be 100% sure so I can fill out the form correctly and say that it's a bad motherboard. And we'll see whether we get some sort of display here. And uh, we've got power to the RAM. You can see it lighting up here. And there we go. We get display and it works. So we now know that it's a motherboard related issue. It's that simple. Now there's going to be times where you get down to the CPU and motherboard and then you have to determine whether it's a CPU related issue or motherboard issue. But in this case, we definitely know it's to do with that slot on the board. But there is going to be times where you're going to come down to whether it be a CPU issue or a motherboard issue. You would then remove the CPU and examine it. You can also take the cooler off and put your hands on the CPU to see whether the CPU is getting hot when you power it on. And nine times out of ten, if you're getting power there, uh, you know, it's pretty much going to be down to a motherboard related issue. I very rarely see CPU failures, but it's not to say that it doesn't happen. Now, if you have another spare CPU to hand, it's always advisable to swap it out and test it to be 100% sure that it's not a CPU related issue. Now, a lot of this issue could have been avoided if you did your power on self test where you took the board out and put it on your bench, which I showed you earlier on. And you could have avoided all of this stress and hassle because now this has to be stripped down and to get the motherboard out of the uh, case. Now, it's always advisable to test before you build your PC. But another thing we have to do now is strip it down and RMA uh, this motherboard, which is going to be a bit of a pain. Now, this is what we call a DOA in the trade. And basically, that means dead on arrival. So which motherboards are the best? And which motherboards does it least likely happen to? Well, I can tell you right now that over the years, I've built many, many PCs and I've used many different pieces of hardware. And it happens to all of the manufacturers, whether it be Asus, ASRock, uh, MSI, Gigabyte. They're all the same. And it does happen occasionally where you get a piece of hardware that's dead on arrival. They make so many of these motherboards nowadays that you're bound to get a bad one every so often. And this is probably a bad trace where that uh, memory slot is which is uh, not been soldered properly and it's made the trace bad and of course that means it won't work in that slot anyway i think that's going to be about it for this video that's basically how you can troubleshoot and diagnose a pc that won't post or boot but the fans are spinning my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk a big shout out to all my youtube members who join my youtube members group your names are rolling up on the screen right now i really do appreciate the support and I'll see you again for another video real soon. Bye for now.